check this out. It's just a bucket of water. But <clears throat> I wanted to dump it out on the putting green just so that you could see how it flows, all right? Come in, you can come in real close right here. I just wanna show you this grass. You can tell that all of these leaves are actually growing that way, right? So when I pour this water, it's gonna kinda go off the back of the leaf and form a stream and go obviously downhill, right? But this is, it does look fake, doesn't it? So as smooth as that water is, you can see how it's taking a turn over there. And as it's flowing, it's following the ground. So doesn't it look like this was gonna go that way and then over here? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we're gonna talk about. Yeah, right? So see what the water's doing right here? Check that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so as you see the stream, think of it like, just like a stream in nature, right? And it's, it's very, very smooth, so the water is flowing a long way. I mean, you would think it would have gotten absorbed at that point. But just like the mouth of the river is really big, by the time it makes it all the way down, it's just following. It just so happens that that particular hole looks like it's really close to where the river is. But as you can see, this hole right here is kind of on the side of a hill. And if there was a hole there, that would be on that side of the hill. And then that river is going to continue, or this little creek by the time it gets to the end, is going to flow all the way it's going to turn left. So let's go follow it and see where it, where it goes. So as that little creek keeps continuing on, it's going to go down, all the way down the hill. And if it could continue, if there was tons more water, it's going to leave here, flow all the way down to that drainage hole right there. Right? So the mo most important thing to really notice in this is that there's no straight lines. Right? So the question was, well, how do you read greens? Well, this is kind of what you have to do is visually see the river, All right? So let's go back down to where the drain is because then we can look back the other way. All right, so we know at this point that drain is coming right down past us. <clears throat> so let's say you're playing on the course and you hit your shot and it goes over here and you're wondering, okay, I'm gonna putt from that hole or from that ball to this first hole. What you're looking at is colors and feeling with your feet, hills, and you're trying to visualize where that stream would be on the green, All right? So just like in the mountains, any stream I've ever seen does not go in a straight line straight from the top of the mountain to the bottom. It always has these switchbacks, right? And so, like right here on the green, that water, it kind of went over here, and then it kind of worked its way and it snaked all the way down to the front. <clears throat> Basically, your putt breaks toward the river. Okay, so first off, you gotta see the river. The river is always located between the mountaintops. All right, so as you look up here, right where I dumped that bucket was basically the highest mountain in this area, right? <clears throat> this little hillside over here, see there's like a little rise? That's maybe another hilltop. So between this hill and that hill is the valley, and there, there's your river. So the ball is always gonna turn into the bottom of the river. So from here, this ball has to turn and move into the river. See that? So if I was on this side over here and I was putting toward that hole, it's going to go toward the hole, but it's going to kind of bank in toward the river. Because even from where I am to that spot, I'm going downhill to the river. <clears throat> so there's two things that's really important in putting. One is the curve. And the other is the speed. 
right? So if your ball is literally in the river right here and you're putting straight up the river, you're going straight uphill. If the river exits this way, you're going straight downhill. All right, so that's an easy one. <clears throat> Whenever the ball and the hole is in the river, it's easy. It's like a trench and you just put it and it goes along the river and it goes in. Whenever the, the hole is on the side of the mountain, that's when it's really tricky, right? So visually what you do is you need to look for two things, mountains and valleys. The very, very bottom of the valley would be that drainage hole over there, right? So <clears throat> there's a mountaintop, mountaintop, that means there must be a valley or a river in the middle. And then not only does the mountain come into a valley here, it's also leaning this way. So the drainage ditch will tell you which way that river is running <clears throat> on every hole. Yeah. And so as a, as a golf course designer, it's their job to actually protect the little leaf of the putting green. So if you get too much water settling, like actually right here, there's a little bit too much water. See, it's kind of, there could even be a little mold in there. There could be um, just a soggy nature to that. So what happens is anytime you get excess collection of water, it rots whatever it's touching, right? So if you get build up water in your house, it's gonna rot your house. Same thing out in nature, it's gonna rot the grass. So because this leaf is so tiny and fragile, the golf course architect does not want any water pooling up in any area because uh, otherwise it would rot the nice grass, right? <clears throat> so you think about it that way from a biology standpoint, you're thinking, okay, small leaf, small roots, can't have too much water, it's gonna drown. So the architect has to shape the ground and channel the water on purpose to get it to a place where it can drain away. So that drainage hole that's right there is now got a drainage pipe and it's probably going straight underneath the putting green over there to the driving range where it's the lowest point. And then it's gonna store the water there where it doesn't matter if it rots, <laughs> right? It'll just dry up. <clears throat> so basically when you get out of your golf cart and you've hit your shot onto the green, right away with your eyes, you're scanning the whole putting green looking for mountaintops and valleys, and then you're also looking for drains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. <clears throat> no, good question. So the answer to that is there is nothing completely flat. Because if there was a completely flat spot, it's gonna collect water. So, you know when you're driving in your car and you go over a hill and it says like 6% grade, you know, brake test or whatever, or six degrees, 6%. So when you're looking at the terrain, every putting green has a minimum of a half a degree of angle. So there are flat-ish sections, but if you get it in your head that there's never actually a totally flat spot, that's a good thing, because then you're always looking for the curve, right? So even on this green, this section right here in the middle would be relatively flat, right? So the next thing <clears throat> that we're going to talk about is how do you practice to learn all of these angles, right? Because it's one thing to kind of get it in your head that, oh, okay, I get it. There's a mountaintop, there's a valley, but practically, what does that really mean? Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and I'm going to show you how to set up a practice station. That way, when you come out, you're not just whacking the ball willy nilly all around. You're actually working on some stuff. Right. So what you're going to do is I've got a little s station of tees and golf balls and ball markers set up. And I'm just going to show you how to do this. The first thing you want to do is try to figure out which which uh, part of the putting green is downhill from your hole, right? So we know with the river, it, went, it just happened to go right past this hole. So we can assume that this angle this way, right? So you're gonna take one large step, is that straight, straight downhill, okay? <coughs> 
It's not always the case, but we're going to assume for this that straight uphill would be directly the opposite. So you're going to take another large step out here, put a T. So if you've got the downhill side, uphill side, straight sideways would be one T on either side straight out, right? Some people call this practice north, south, east, west. <coughs> it's just four sides or four angles, right? Basically uphill, downhill, and side hill. Knowing that that's the downhill side, your side hill putts are curving down. This one's curving down, and then this one here is going more straight down, All right? Could be because we know that the river bottom is a little bit kind of wiggly through there. <clears throat> so that's why it's important to know that these little micro terrains really do affect the ball. That ball is going to wiggle just like the water did. So when you're setting up this practice station, you've got tees and then you've got ball markers. And I'll show you what those ball markers are for right now. Okay, so visually, when you're going to hit a putt straight up a hill, you're going to have to hit it harder. Right? So when you're practicing this putt, you're actually visualizing hitting the ball all the way to this ball marker. Right? So it's just helping you with your speed. It's uphill, you're going to hit it firmer. Right? Now, when you're putting downhill from that one, you're visualizing the same ball marker because now it's actually going to roll over. That's why it's flat. Push it down nice and flat. It's going to roll over that ball marker and roll into the hole. So when you're putting uphill, visualize something past. When you're putting downhill, visualize something on this side. <clears throat> now here's where it's really cool. If you're putting from that one, you're still visualizing this ball marker because it's going to curve in from the high side. And if you're putting from this one, well, you're still kind of visualizing that ball marker because it's going to putt and curve in on this side. So this makes putting seem a whole lot simpler than we make it out to be.